Hi guys, welcome to the energy and ecosystem. In this video, we will be looking at the food chains and energy transfer. But I would strongly recommend you will watch the maps video on section five because there will be more explanations on the energy transfer and the equations that you need to be aware of. So uh, here we will be looking at the um, biomass mainly and how this could be measured. So in terms of the specification, uh, we will be uh, looking at the biomass uh, that can be measured in terms of the mass of carbon or dry mass of tissue per given area. So the chemical uh, energy stored in dry biomass can be estimated using calorimetry. And this is something that we are going to investigate today. So uh, the keywords that you might uh, come across uh, between the past paper questions, obviously you should be aware of those, are uh, producers, consumers, saprobionts or decomposers, herbivore, carnivore, uh, food chains, trophic levels, and obviously you will come across the arrows on the trophic, trophic levels. Also, you need to know the food webs, habitats, biomass, biotic factors, abiotic factors, energy, respiration, and photosystem, uh, photosynthesis sorry, within that topic. So, uh, how does energy actually enter an ecosystem and how energy can become uh, transferred between the organisms is due to the fact that the ultimate source of energy for organisms is found in an ecosystem in the sunlight. And sunlight uh, is converted to chemical energy by photosynthesizing organisms and is passed as a food between other organisms. So what we need to remember, obviously, the sunlight is uh, the most important uh, source of energy that will allow photosynthesis to take place and produce uh, produce glucose. OK, and uh, this is our biomass. So uh, in terms of the food chains, it is not much to talk about. And I would uh, actually avoid this topic on the uh, on your essays because it's not that much relevant, but three questions could be asked. So the food chain is a model to illustrate the feeding, so the trophic relationships between organisms. So the food, that glucose, that energy or biomass is passed from one organism to the next organism. And each organism in the chain is a source of energy for another one, for the next one. So organism is assigned to a trophic level based on its position in the food chain. And organism might occupy different trophic levels in different food chains or during different stages of their lives. And the arrows will then link the organism in the food chain and direction. It's nothing else than a flow of energy and biomass throughout the trophic levels. So this is the example of the trophic levels where we've got producers, primary consumers, secondary consumers, tertiary consumers. And obviously, each of those uh, organisms is going to lose energy for the respiration. And uh, in terms of uh, them dying out later on, they will be decomposed by decomposers. So, uh, or saprobionts, in other words. So energy flow and food chains, this is something that you need to be aware of now. So uh, biomass, obviously, it's, uh, it's something that will be passed on, produced by the plants. And uh, this is affected by few things. Also, we say that the main starting point is the sunlight. But the light could be reflected, for example, the green light. The light could miss chlorophyll. There could be the wrong wavelengths that won't be absorbed by the chlorophyll. The respiration will be taking place by the producers as well, which will use the energy. And the inefficiency of the photosynthesis is another factor which will affect the biomass. So energy flow within those uh, food uh, chains will be limited to about four to five trophic levels. And this is because the insufficient energy for large breeding populations uh, is found at the higher trophic levels. The total mass of organisms is less at higher trophic levels. 
and the total energy available is less at the each trophic level as one moves up a food chain and that energy is lost for many activities and the main of those is a respiration which you always need to mention in your answers so if you're looking at this okay the uh, low percentage uh, energy trans is transferred because uh, it's not consumed cannot be digested it's uh, lost uh, for example as the urine or feces and it's also used to maintain the body temperature so uh, in terms of the energy taken by organisms, we need to consider the fact that it, uh, energy is passed on as chemical energy in biomass to the next trophic level. It's stored as chemical en energy in detritus and then passed on to decomposers when uh, they will decline. And it's converted to heat energy by inefficient chemical reactions and transport pumps or friction due to movement. And also heat energy is given out to the surroundings by radiation on convection. So what are actually the dendrivores? So those are the things that will fit on dendroids. So the dead or declining material, giving it a bigger surface area for microorganisms to work on. So in terms of the biomass, it's the total mass of living material in a specific area at a given time. You need to be able to provide the equation, the units for this, sorry. So the measured, uh, the biomass is measured using dry mass per given area in the given time. So that's how you're going to write this down. Don't do any stuff like grams per, okay. And then per again, uh, because what the examiner wants is the minus, okay? So G, M minus 2, yeah, minus 1, okay? And fresh biomass is the biomass that will include water. So you need to be able to then uh, describe how can we get from the fresh biomass to the dry biomass, which is the biomass without the water. And the method of doing that, will be discussed in a second and how can we do it we need to gently heat the uh, fresh biomass up to up to 100 degrees because this is the temperature that will let us evaporate water but would not burn any organic material and we need to measure the mass and then heat it again so you will repeat this process few times until you will get a constant mass and this is the method of getting this uh, biomass uh, dry biomass because dry mass doesn't contain water and obviously we don't need water because it does not contain energy so the, the, the system, the, the uh, method of doing that could be using calorimetry. So in terms of the cal calorimetry, a sample of dry material is weighted and is then burned in pure oxygen within a sealed chamber called a bomb. So doing that, okay, we're going to use the water bath and heat the material uh, and make sure that water will evaporate. And as more, obviously, as we know, much heat, so that energy is required to raise the temperature. So every gram of water has to be then heated by one degree. So uh, then we can calculate the energy which is released from the mass of burnt biomass and the units, kilojoules, okay, per the mass of the biomass, so kilograms. Okay, so that's the units. So finally, food webs. Okay, so food webs are more complicated uh, kind of food chains. Uh, they are interconnected food chains within an ecosystem. And what we've mentioned, all the same stuff, sunlight is converted into biomass by plants and passed through the tropic levels. And there are interactions between the food webs need to remember that energy is stored as the biomass so for example if we're talking about the calvin cycle the gp will be reduced to tp tp will be used to produce glucose okay and more of the glucose means more 
biomass. So that's the most important thing. Biomass produced by the produces will be passed on to the next trophic levels. And obviously, because they're using energy for like re uh, respiration and other activities, the number of the uh, 